So welcome to this training session. This is the small business calendaring system. So this system is designed to get us about 50% more time in our work week. So we're going to get started. And does anyone know the number one reason for business or personal failure in business? The burnout. That's right, burnout. <laughs> People get so tired of going so hard and so fast for so long without feeling like they're getting, without feeling like they're getting anywhere, they just kind of give up. It's like they stop and just kind of either plateau out, and just all of a sudden you're just going in the, the drudgery of everything. Mm -hmm. So this system is specifically designed to deal with the stress of burnout, not enough time, not enough money, losing money, brain scatter. Anybody ever had brain scatter? Yeah. Also, you're just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't sleep. I can't get my operations to run right, right without me. My business is failing or things aren't working out for us. Sound familiar? This system is sp specifically designed to give us relief from burnout, time pressures, sales and marketing challenges. Sound familiar? Yeah. Allocate your time and or employee productivity, brain scatter, and I can't get my operations to run right, business is failing. So welcome to the small business calendaring system. Regain control of your business time because you deserve your personal time. So first of all, thank you for being here. My purpose today is to give you six to eight hours in a year business week. Sound good? That's a full business day each week. So first of all, a little bit about Action Coach. We are the world's business, largest business coaching firm in the world. We have over a thousand coaches worldwide in 29 countries. We coach over 15,000 businesses each week. It's a little bit about Joe. My background is sales and marketing, operations, everything but finance. That's why I went back and got my MBA. So now I've got a finance background too. Uh, NLP and best-selling author of BrainShare. Everything we're going to be covering today is in this book. Mm. Okay. So from the calendaring system, it's in chapter six of this book. So if you don't have a copy, make sure you pick up a copy when you leave. Or go to Amazon and buy a copy. Yes, that's my plug. <laughs> so my job, as you've heard this before, is to teach you to fish, not to fish for you. So we're gonna have a little fun. Everyone familiar with left brain, right brain? Yeah, no. No, okay. So your left brain is words, math, logic. Right brain, art, music, creativity. So we've got both, right? So if we look at our brain, we've got words, math, logic, short-term memory is also left brain. Mm -hmm. Right brain is long-term memory. Okay, make sense? Can you remember that from school? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna have a little fun. So what I want you to do, and you've gotta look at the screen on this one, is look at the following and call out the word. Okay, just the word, are you ready? Go. Simple, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna ask you to do on the next one is look at it and call it the color, not the word. Okay, are you ready? Go. It took you guys a lot longer. <laughs> Why is that? You, you know your colors. Some of them were a little tricky, but. Why is that? Why did it take so much longer? How about we're switching them from left brain to right brain? Words are left brain. Colors are right brain. So we're moving back and forth. Now if you do this three times, you'll just see the colors, you won't even see the words anymore because we're in a specific brain share or mindset. And it becomes very, very simple. But every time you have to bounce back and forth, it's difficult. It was hard too, wasn't it? You had to really focus. Mm -hmm. And it's like you have to really concentrate. And at the end of the day, you're really tired and you're like, how much did I accomplish today? Well, not much, but I'm really tired mm -hmm. because you've been bouncing back and forth between your brain sets. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So one of the theories behind this is we try to bundle all the colors together and all the words together so we get more efficient. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're trying. That's what we're going to be doing today or getting started. This is an evolution. It's not a revolution. You don't flick the switch and this happens. It typically takes about six to eight weeks to get the system implemented. But we're gonna have some fun while we're doing it. So when we say or think, I know, what happens? You stop receiving information when you say I know. That's right. There's a chemical reaction in your brain. Say I know, I know that. So everything you hear 
just bounces off. It's like a steel door coming down and just bounces off. So instead of saying or thinking, I know, why don't we try using this? Isn't that interesting? interesting? You can almost feel your brain open up. Say, I know. Like, I know that. And then, isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. You can feel your brain mm -hmm. able to receive information. Isn't that Interesting. All it's right. Really positive too. It is much more positive. So another thing is we want to stay there's above and below the line. When we take ownership, accountability, and responsibility for everything that happens to us in our business and our lives, we've got the or, like a paddle, to get us where we want to go. Or blame, it's Jimmy's fault. Excuses, it's the economy. Or denial don't even know I am lying to myself. I will just stay in bed. Kind of cool? Uh, I got to tell a little story on this one because I was doing this workshop and somebody in the back of the room goes, well, I got mugged. It wasn't my fault. Hmm. I went, oh, interesting. Is it okay if we take some time to talk about that? And everybody was like, sure. So I asked him. I said, specifically, where were you when you got mugged? He said Los Angeles. And I said, Los Angeles is a big city. Specifically, where? He said Compton. I said, Ooh, Compton, kind of a rough neighborhood. He said, Oh yeah. And I said, And specifically, what time was it? He said one o'clock. I said, Oh, one o'clock in the afternoon. He said, No, <laughs> one o'clock in the morning. And I said, And specifically, what were you doing when you got mugged? And he said, Well, going to an ATM machine. And I said, wow. going to or coming back? <laughs> and he said, well, coming back from an ATM machine at 1 o'clock in the morning in an area you, you didn't know, and you have no responsibility for that? And everyone kind of looked at him and said, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We all, when we look back at what's happened or what's, what's around us, we have some level of responsibility for just about everything. When we take that, then we have the order to get us where we want to go. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So, results or nothing. So next, goals. How many of you have written goals? Written goals? Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> First of all, congratulations. You're in the top 3% in the world. So I'm going to show you why this is so important. Is that okay? So, first of all, let's look at some stats. 70% of people have no written or verbal goals. 27% have verbal goals. 3% have written goals. Now here's the most interesting part to me. 98% of the world's wealth resides in the 3% that have written goals. Hmm. Now I'm not saying you're going to get to that 98%, but your odds get a whole lot better, don't they? So our goals set what's called our reticular activation system. It's our subconscious mind driving towards a goal. Have you ever decided to buy a car? Yeah. And then all of a sudden you see that car everywhere? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah, whatever it is, you just once you decide it, you start seeing it everywhere. That's your subconscious mind at work going, Oh, um, I want that. Your subconscious mind is trying to get trying to attain that for you. This is why goals are so important is once we set them our subconscious mind will start working for us. So the formula for change. How many of you ever wanted to change something? Okay. This is the formula for that. Yes, I am an engineer. So it's D times V plus F must be greater than R. Well, first of all, if you're not dissatisfied with where you're at, you're not going to change because you're, you're okay. It's like, and if you don't have a vision of where you want to go, you're not going to change because if either one of these are zero, what's the output? Yeah. Zero. Oh, F. F. Yeah. Or zero. The output is zero. Zero times anything is zero. So if you have no dissatisfaction or no vision, you're not going to change. Once you have a dissatisfaction and a vision of where you want to go, you got to be willing to take the first steps, and that must be greater than the resistance to change. And everyone is resistant to change. It's Newton's law. Something in motion will stay in motion, something at rest will stay at rest, right? Unless another force is applied upon it. So whatever we're, whatever we're doing, we're going to not, we don't want to change. Mm -hmm. So once our dissatisfaction and our vision is strong enough, then we'll be willing to change. This could be applied to uh, planning your day. That's right. It could be applied to just about anything if you think about it. Mm. If you want something to change, 
you got to be dissatisfied with where you're at. Have a vision of what you want it to look like. Okay, now the six steps to master results in your business. The foundation is mastery. Now, mastery contains four elements. Time, how we use our time, that's what we're going to be focused on today. Destination, we got to know where we want to go. Delivery, that's consistency in your product or service. And money, we've got to know how many leads, conversion rate, average dollar sale, number of transactions, and margin. So that's the foundation of every business. And then niche, which is your unique selling proposition, target market, and guarantee. And then systems, which is leverage. <clears throat> this is your marketing systems how we answer the phone, all the checklists and the operations, customer satisfaction, invoicing, everything. And then we put the team together. Okay, that doesn't mean not resources, but as we start putting the systems together, we start developing teams. We'll need different resources or different team members based on the systems. And then we get to synergy, which is you put a general manager in place and let the system start running itself. And then we get to results, where we duplicate, expand, etc. Commercial, profitable enterprise, that works without you. Okay, the four areas to mastery are destination, money, time, which is what we're going to focus on today, and delivery. Time is a limited asset that we have, and how we utilize it will determine what happens with us, right? Because health, we can work out better if we use our time, right? Eat better. Most people don't eat better because they don't have time, and so it's fast food. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so you can make more money, but you cannot make more time. So this one may look familiar. This is called Stephen Covey's Time Matrix. Okay, and what he says is everything we do falls into one of four quadrants. Okay, the quadrants are urgent, not urgent, important, not important. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, so our urgent and important. This is crisis, pressing problems, customer situations. Well, we have to go do it. It's urgent and important. We have to do it now. Make sense? <clears throat> and there's important but not urgent. This is prevention, relationship building, planning, recreation, training. What we're doing today, it's not urgent, but it is important, right? Mm -hmm. And then we've got urgent but not important. That's interruptions, phone calls, some meetings, most email. Oh, I gotta do it now. But most of the time it's not even important. Mm. And there's not urgent, not important, which is trivia, busy work, time wasters. Um, spider solitaire falls in here for me. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever it is, if we look at everything we do, it falls into one of those quadrants. Now, what is the typical <clears throat> quadrants look like for each of us? It looks something like this, typically. We've got not urgent, not important. Most of us spend about 2 to 3% of our time there. Not as bad as you think. And then we've got urgent, but not important. <clears throat> now think about this. It's urgent, but it's not important. Well, how can it be urgent? It's a hallucination. Right. We just think it's urgent. We spend typically 50% of our time there. Isn't that? Oh. <clears throat> isn't that interesting? Now we've got our urgent and important, which is demand. We, this is what we should be doing. It's about 25 to 30% of our time. And then we've got not urgent, but important. This is our planning which is typically about 15%. I actually have had people quote me that they spend more time planning their wedding than they do their life. So what this talks about is how do we move from these quadrants to something a little different? Here's what it should be. We get this down to less than 1%. Not a big change, just a little bit more. Um, oh, it's almost just awareness that, hey, do I need to be doing this and is it important? I used to have a little post-it on my computer that said, do I need to be doing this and do I need to be doing it now? And then we've got urgent, not important. This is a delusion, it's a hallucination. We try to get that down to 15%. We're still human, we're still gonna go, oh, oh, I gotta go do that now. That's just who we are. But we'll drop it down. And then urgent and important, that stays almost the same. We get a little efficiency out of it, but not, not a whole lot. Here's the interesting part. 65 to 80% of our time should be spent on planning. Mm. If we're doing that, then things get very, very efficient because we know exactly what we need to be doing. Now, how much time do we spend today planning our day? Um, Isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when, as we go through this, that's going to be one of the key elements, is planning the day, reviewing the day, and taking some breaks in between. Okay, so some of top, top 12 time management tips. 
First of all, you cannot manage time. Well, I know Einstein says time is a variable, but for today, we're going to say time is a constant, okay? <laughs> <clears throat> so we can't manage time. We can only manage ourselves, what we do with our time. There's always too much to do. Accept it. Embrace it. Yes, there's, I'd like to do so. There's always more than what we can do. So identify the top items and do those and do them completely and do them well. Number three, if you have to lick a toad, it doesn't pay to look at it for long. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> the longer you look at it, just the nastier and uglier that toad is going to get. You have to do it? Do it. Stop procrastinating. Do it. This is, it leads to a book called Eat the Frog from Brian Tracy. One of my favorite books. Don't confuse activity with accomplishments. If you have a to-do list, I recommend you get rid of it and make it a to-accomplish list. Or even better, start plugging it into your calendar. The probability of something getting done that's on your calendar is 80%. You know what the probability of something getting done that's on a list? 17. Oh. 80 versus 17. Mm -hmm. Because you make the list. It keeps getting longer and longer and longer and longer and longer and longer. Right. And then you kind of get so tired of it, you redo it. And then it keeps getting longer and longer and longer. And half the stuff on there never, ever gets done. But if you plug it in your calendar, it's probably going to get done. Yeah, that's what we're guilty of doing, mm -hmm. having a, a long list to do. That's right. Congratulations. I had one guy that had 83 things on his list. And when we finally broke it down, he got down to 47. Now, as we're going to go through this, you're going to find out that there's actually 160 15 minute time blocks in one week. So, next, have smart goals. So, this is your goal setting. Smart goals is specific, measurable, achievable results oriented with a time frame. If you want me to review your goals, I'll be happy to, or if Christine will be happy to. She's an expert in this area now. Long-term thinking will improve short-term decision-making. Build time into your daily calendar for planning. That's what we're going to work on today a little bit. And then spend 10% of your time on planning. It'll save you up to 90% of the time to complete the task. Make sense? Prayer principle. 20% of your activities give you 80% of your results. My job is to figure out how to get that 20% to 40%, get you 160% of your results. This is a cool one. Don't prioritize your schedule. Schedule your priorities. So, for example, for me, my son's one of my highest priorities. Before I do anything on my calendar, I schedule an hour with him every other day. Otherwise, I don't do it. My wife, second priority, well, maybe first priority. <laughs> She's watching. My wife, I, do, I schedule a date night with her every week, Thursday nights. If I don't, it won't happen. I'm scheduling my priorities. If education is a priority for you, schedule your reading time. Whatever your priorities are, schedule those first. Because that, that's what's critical. If you don't, they won't get done. You heard the story about the um, science class. The guy comes in with three bushel baskets. One full of big rocks, mm -hmm. one full of gravel, one full of sand. And so I want you to put them all in the, this barrel. First guy comes in, dumps the sand in, dumps the gravel in, tries to put the big rocks in, they all fall over. This didn't work out. What's the next one? Next guy comes in, pours the gravel in, then the sand, big rocks. Doesn't work. Next guy comes in, takes the big rocks, dumps them in first. Shakes the bucket a little bit, puts the gravel in, shakes it around, and then pours the sand in. Shakes around, and everything settles into place. It all fits. Our lives are the same way. Our big rocks are our priorities. Put those in first. Everything else will fit in. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Next, procrastination comes from a feel of inadequacy, lack of confidence. Resolve today that you are a do-it-yourself project. If you're procrastinating, it's because you don't want to do it or you don't know how to do it. Most of the time, we don't know how to do it. Learn how to do it so you can have somebody else do it for you. Make sense? <clears throat> Identify and eliminate all constraints in your business. So what's your constraint? So what's, you know, from, from getting this much output, what's the, the in, in the overall process, what's the, the smallest amount? That's your constraint or your bottleneck. Identifying those, opening it up, so we can identify the next bottleneck and the next bottleneck in your process, in your business, in your life. 
If an activity feels like too much, it is. End of story. Right. <laughs> if an activity feels like too much, it is. Accept it, embrace it. Break it into chunks. 15 minute chunks are easy. You can do almost anything in fi for 15 minutes. Phone calls, you can do phone calls for 15 minutes. Do it for eight hours, oh my gosh. <laughs> but 15 minutes, we can do that. Chunks. Use an accountability coach. Practice intentional procrastination. Have you ever heard of that? Intentional procrastination. So I have to tell a story on this one. So one of my mentors, Don Maston, just hired me as the marketing manager for North and South America. So I'm like a big wig now with, with a Fortune 50 company. And I come in and he hires me and I'm full of energy. And I go out and I do a focus group. I spend lots of money doing a big focus group. And competitive analysis, so I hire somebody to come in and we do this competitive analysis. Mm -hmm. And then we do a customer satisfaction survey. And I'm like all excited about this. So I send Don the um, focus group results. And I see him in the hall and I say, Don, what did you think about that focus group stuff? He asks me, well, I haven't read it. I'm like, well, you got my email, right? He goes, yeah, I got your email. I said, but you haven't read it. He goes, no. So I'm feeling kind of weird about this. So a couple days later, I get all the customer satisfaction results. I'm like, all right, this is good stuff. Don, what would you think about that? I haven't read it. I said, you got my email, right? He goes, yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling kind of weird now. And the competitive analysis, now this one he's got to read, right? So I, Don, what did you think of that? And he goes, I haven't read it yet. I said, but our meeting's next week. He goes, when's the meeting? He goes, I said, next Friday. He goes, okay, and he looks at his calendar and goes, yep, I'm all set. And I'm like, this is weird. So we have the meeting and he's all prepared. He asks all the right questions. We actually change the strategic direction for the company based on this meeting. And after the meeting, I'm like, Don, I, I don't understand this. This is really bothering me. I, I do all this work and you don't read it. He goes, I, I read it. I said, yeah, but whenever I ask you about it, he goes, you said you didn't read it. He goes, no, 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 goes, let me help you out. He goes, if I would have read it when you first sent it to me, it would have taken me about two hours. I said, yeah, that's about right. He goes, and then you sent me three updates to that afterwards. Oh. <laughs> I said, yeah, you're, you're right. And he goes, that would have taken me you know, 15, 20 minutes each, let's just say. Another hour. I said, okay. He goes, then you sent me the competitive analysis stuff. By the way, great job on that, Joe. That was fantastic. A ton of great information. Really helped us with our, where we're going here. But if I would have read it when you sent it to me, it would have taken two hours. I said, about right. He goes, and then you sent me two updates on that. I said, yeah. He goes, that would take another hour. <laughs> I said, yeah, you're right. Because then you sent me the customer satisfaction stuff. Well, that would have taken me all, uh, another two hours. And then another two updates, another hour. So I'm a busy man, and instead of spending two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve hours reading this throughout the last couple of weeks, I scheduled two hours to read it all at one time and be prepared when I come into the meeting on Friday. So I did all that Thursday night and was ready for Friday. Now, which is a better utilization of my time? Two hours to read everything and get everything compiled and have all my questions, or twelve hours and have to go back and review it before the meeting anyway? Intentional procrastination. He intentionally waited to read those until it was time to read them. We have that happen to us too. When do we read our emails? We get them. Uh -huh. yeah. Isn't that interesting? When should we read them? When it's proper to. When it's time to read them. So that's intentional procrastination. Make sense? Very difficult in today's world. So this is called a skills fund matrix. After we get the calendar going and we start getting that moving forward and we start working on what we should be working on, we'll do what's called a skills fund matrix. Oh, this is my favorite thing to do. That's right. So what we do is we plot out all of our activities that we're doing on a weekly basis based on how fun is it for us to do and what skill level it requires of our skills. We plot it all out and then we start there and have somebody else start doing that. We delegate that out. So what we're doing is what requires our skill and is fun for us. Then business is really cool and our jobs are pretty cool. It takes time to get there. This is usually four to five months after the calendaring system. So my personal top tips, if you don't have motivating goals, it's not gonna matter. 
Don't finish today until you plan tomorrow. Eat a frog for breakfast every day. <laughs> you need to do the ugliest, nastiest thing you have to do first thing in the morning. Everything tastes better after that. If you wait till the end of the day, the whole day drags on and on and on because you know you've still got to do that. And then you're like, oh, well, I'll do that tomorrow morning. And then you keep up, and your days just drag on and on. Get it done, knock it out. The rest of the day is a piece of cake. Don't major in minor things. Create a calendaring system, which is what we're going to do today. Invest time, don't spend it. Have agendas for all meetings. If you go to a meeting and there's not an agenda, ask for one. But have them. Otherwise, you'll go on rabbit trails. Have conference calls or use Skype to save time. Christine and I do a lot of Skype. Learn to delegate to your team. And hire a coach. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if your calendar looks something like this, we're going to make some improvements. Does you, anyone's calendar look kind of like that? You got these white spaces and you got some mm -hmm. things planned here, kind of sporadically around. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. We're going to make some progress today. So, most time management systems are great for employees and managers or people that have a limited scope of responsibility. Now, this is a small business, right? That means we're all wearing multiple hats at multiple times. So, different systems, you set priorities, create lists, block time. Stephen Covey, David Allen, Brian Tracy, all fantastic resources. However, if you're a small business owner or in a small business, a solopreneur or an MLM, it doesn't work. Why? Hmm. My discovery. Now, this is my capability in PowerPoint, and I'm really <laughs> proud of that. So, what happens is, you wear too many different hats. You may be the CEO, the CFO, you, you've got how many different roles do you have, how many different roles do you have, you, and you're bouncing around, you're going from words to colors all the time. Right. It gets tired and draining, and at the end of the day, you're like, what am I doing here? And your calendar starts filling up with urgent, unimportant things, or your calendar has nothing scheduled. So, if your calendar has nothing scheduled, then you're scheduled to do nothing. Now, all of us have enough to do, right? Probably more than enough to do. But if it's not in your calendar, your subconscious mind goes, oh, nothing's scheduled. I'm not supposed to do anything. No matter what I do, I'm doing more than I'm supposed to. And we will do the wrong things. Now, I'm not saying that your calendar is gonna control you. But what I'm saying is make conscious decisions on whether you should do that or move it. Because mm -hmm. we all got more than enough to do. Make sense? Otherwise, you just kind of keep going and it just stuff happens. So, first thing we do is I want you to do, we're going to create a default diary. In other words, kind of your, what you should be doing on a regular basis. Most of us have kind of a routine basis. When you're doing editing, it'll change, but that's okay. When we're doing some sales and marketing, that'll change, but we can change it. If we have nothing scheduled, we're scheduled to do nothing. So first thing, does everyone agree there's only 40 hours in a work week? Okay. Whose calendar is it? Mine. Mm -hmm. Mine. That's right. Mine. Who controls it? I do. And who can change it? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and stuff will happen. It's okay. It's okay to move stuff around on your calendar. It's supposed to work that way. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to categorize <clears throat> your roles and responsibilities into its main functions. Okay? So this is the handout that Christine has, and I'll show you what it looks like here in a minute. Uh, yep, okay. it looks like this. So for Christine, she's got sales, marketing, operations, finance, CEO, and travel as her main functions. Once we define those main categories, we actually define them. And so list them out. What is the definition of each of them? Now, what's kind of cool about this form is you've got your labels, percentages, the number of hours we're actually going to spend. In this box, you can put the details of what is in those categories. For you to be successful in the next 90 days, what percentage of time do you need to spend in each of these functions per week during the next 90 days. And if you're not sure, please make sure you talk with Christine or your manager on making sure you're in alignment 
with Christine on these percentages because you might think I need to be spending 90% here. Christine might say, no, I only want you to spend 10% time there. So the, this is critical to start figuring out what percentage of time do you need to be spending where. Make sense? <clears throat> now comes the easy part. We've got our percentages, no more than 100%. There's only 40 hours in a work week. How many hours? That's math. Percentage times 40 gives the number of hours we need to be spending in those specific areas. Um, oh, by the way, the percentages should change every 90 days. Otherwise, you're not changing your business. You're not changing your roles. You're not making progress. Every 90 days, it should be changing. So next, there's a template that looks like this. It's a calendar. It's a blank calendar is all it is. Okay? And each of you will have one of these. And I want you to pull out your crayons or Excel or whatever you like and start developing your calendar. Okay? This is a blueprint of what your, day, your week's going to look like. Okay? It will change, but this is a blueprint of what we want it to look like moving forward. Does this make sense? So first things and some critical items. There's three critical items. <clears throat> One is begin every day with at least 15 minutes to plan your day and eat your frog. Do the at least necessary thing that you need to do that day. You may need to schedule some additional time. That's okay. <clears throat> but 15 minutes to plan your day. And if nothing else gets done, what's well, that one thing that will make it a successful day? That's the frog. End the day with at least 20 minutes. Review your day, reschedule anything that didn't get done, and plan the next day. This is where I do my gratitudes too, personally. Because if you're not happy with what you got, you're not going to get it anymore. I do my meditation in the morning, and I do my gratitudes at night. Now, why do you have to do morning and evening? It's kind of stupid. All you do is sleep in between, right? You ready for some cool stuff? The subconscious brain works twice as hard when you're sleeping as when you're awake. Let, if we let our subconscious brain fix the problems for us or address the problems, we don't have to do it when we're awake. Have you ever heard the shower effect? You know, you're in the shower, you get this brilliant idea. Yeah. <laughs> Who said that? Yeah. That's your subconscious mind working through the night, and when you wake up, oh, you got a brilliant idea. It works. Let our subconscious mind address the problems while we're sleeping. What may be an interesting exercise for you if you've got an editing project. Let's see if I get in trouble with this or not. An editing project that that's, um, spans over some length of time, more than three days. This might be interesting. Is Review it the first time and then schedule up one sleep cycle. And the next amount of time, actually draft your editing and then a sleep cycle and then review and finalize because drafting reviewing or editing and finalizing are three different spaces in your brain if you try to draft edit and review typically here's what happens and i'll, I'll use my own analogy because i'm not a video <laughs> but if i'm drafting um a business plan and I try to draft, edit, and review it all at the same time, it would take me about six to eight hours. Now, I can draft one in about 40 minutes, max. Just start drafting it, put it off to the side. Sleep cycle. Come back, edit it. I usually go like this. Wow, that's better than I thought. Edit it, put it off to the side, come back and finalize it. Instead of taking two hours, 45 minutes. It usually cuts our time in half in people hours. Try it and see. It's something that's, you've got some flexibility there. Um, and then a break in the morning, a break in the afternoon, and a half an hour lunch, minimum. Okay? Now, what's interesting about this is people say, oh, I don't need breaks. No, you don't need the breaks. It's your brain that does. <laughs> it also gives us some nice big chunks of time that we can do our time blocks in. You see this? So we want to do our time blocks in 45 minute to hour and a half increments. 
okay? Based on your typical biorhythms, what you like to do, what you don't like to do in the morning, afternoon, Mondays, Fridays, start putting together what your big blocks are, okay? So it looks like this. Based on our, our things, I like using color codes, your hours, and develop your big blocks. Now you see there's email time in there. I recommend checking your email somewhere between three and five times a day based on your business. If you're checking it all day long, you're losing and wasting time and energy. Phone calls, you can block and uh, do phone calls, but use these big blocks to get into your specific mindset and work through that with the activities. As you're doing these big blocks, a suggestion, do not try to figure out what goes in them. Don't worry about that right now. There's gonna be more than enough time to do everything. If your percentages are accurate, there's gonna be more than enough time to do everything. So don't worry about plugging in what you do, just the big blocks. This normally takes two hours, don't ask me why. But each of these increments is 15 minutes and develop your big blocks. That's, this is one of the hardest parts of your big blocks. Once you've got that nailed down, then we list out all of the tasks that need to get done and we'll start <laughs> plugging them in. But I recommend plugging them in a month out because if you try to plug them in in the next two weeks, you probably already had stuff scheduled. Right. And if you try to plug them in where you've already got stuff scheduled, you'll go nuts. Go out a couple of weeks where you have virtually nothing scheduled and then start plugging it in. Make sense? So, it's evolution, not revolution. Okay, you've been having your calendars this way for a while. Get used to it, get into the rhythm of it. Now you start plugging your task in. It usually takes three to six weeks. It's usually actually six to eight weeks to get really used to it. And the key is no white space. Because if you have white space, you're scheduled to do... Nothing. <laughs> That's right. So your calendar will start looking like this with specific tasks in there. So this says, make your marketing plan, review your marketing plan, do marketing activities. It says follow up with sales. Depending on your business, you'll start plugging your specific tasks into these time slots. So, good luck. Now, this is somebody's calendar that I actually worked with before I started working with them. You see they got kind of a couple of things scheduled here throughout the day, but not, not much, right? Now this is their calendar after working with me for three months. Now here's the interesting thing. This person had a couch in her office. She had a couch in her office because she was sleeping there at least one night a week because she had so much work to do. Mm. Her business had been flat for more than four years. Implementing the system, she was going home every night by 6 p.m. She was working out every day as that was one of her goals. Nice. Her business was growing at greater than 30% and life started becoming cool. It works when we do it. Now, are some of these going to need to be moved around? Absolutely. Or sometimes there's not anything to do there? Absolutely. What do you do then? What's your... Your, your, your next, your next plug-in, it might be market research. Mm -hmm. I don't know. For me, I'll, I'll use my as an example, I, I don't get paid unless I'm coaching, right? The coaching's highest priority. I should be coaching about 70% of my time. If I'm not coaching, what should I be doing? You should be planning or marketing. Marketing or actually sales. Doing uh, what I call diagnostics, having somebody in my office doing a workshop. Right. If I'm not doing that, what should I be doing? I better be marketing. Because mm -hmm. nothing else matters, right? Those are the three things that are highest priority for me. Do I still need to do my books? Not anymore, I've outsourced that. Because <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> my social media, do I need to be doing that? Yes, but I've outsourced that. So all these things, that skills fund matrix, you start outsourcing it. But until you get the core functions down, it's difficult. And every day, uh, somebody will reschedule an appointment. It's okay. It's supposed to. But that 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the evening, will allow you to do those changes. 
Okay. Try it. It's it, it, it's a different way of thinking. But in the morning, literally, if I get up and I don't review my day when I'm supposed to do that day, I'm lost. And it takes this long. Are you ready? For me now. Well, let's look at tomorrow. I don't have my glasses on. Uh, tomorrow starts at 7 a.m. I've got a 7 to 9. And then, uh, oh, i got a half an hour break. And then I do 9.30 to 10.30, I've got a client. 10.30 to 11.30, I've got a client. Oh, look, i got a half an hour break there. You know what? I'm going to do some social media there. Let me plug that in. I'm going to do some social media there. Um, and then i got a client there. Do I end at 4 o'clock? You know what? Um, I'm going to take my wife out to dinner if she's available. Yeah. you got your whole day planned for you. I'm done. Hmm. If something changes, it's okay. You move it around. But I know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing that day. And if there's a white spot in there, it, I, I get nervous because that means I'm probably going to do something that I don't need to be doing or I shouldn't be doing. White spaces are bad. If you need to put more breaks in, put more breaks in. It's okay. Yeah. Also having that Y space, um, uh, you could ask your manager saying, oh, is there anything else that we need to do to grow this business? Or is there anything else you need from me? Because uh, that might spark uh, something behind uh, their heads on... Uh, the project they they could be doing, uh, mm -hmm. but they're putting it off because uh, you're busy with a, a current project. After we get the system down, then we can start working on all the other things to optimize the business. Mm 